So we're going to start out here by taking a look at the main driver program for the file count case study. And we're going to talk about the classes, the associated helper classes that come with it. And we're also going to take a look at how it's structured and what it's doing, what it's testing. And you can find this in this particular file in my fork join project, in my folders, folder, in my live lessons GitHub repository. So here we are in my IntelliJ project for this particular fork join program. Here's the main entry point. And as we're going to see, this is going to allow us to. So here we are in the main class in the full fork join project. And this is going to demonstrate these different Java parallel programming mechanisms like fork join framework and streams to count the number of files in a very, very, very large recursive folder hierarchy and also calculate the cumulative sizes of all the files. So here's what the program looks like. We're going to warm up the thread pool a couple times. It turns out when you do benchmarking and you have thread pools, especially the common fork join pool as we're using here, it doesn't create the threads until the first time it's accessed, which means the first time you run it, you have to pay the overhead of starting all the threads. And that's not really fair to see how much of a benefit you're getting from parallelism. So we do a warm up that starts things off, warms everything up. And then the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do the parallel streams implementation. We'll talk more about that later. Then we warm up the thread pool again. Then we're going to go ahead and do the fork join implementation. And then we're going to finish off with the sequential stream implementation. And by that point, the fork join pool should be nice and warm. And so we don't have to run the warm up the thread pool again. After we run all those three tests, we're going to get the timing results and print them. I'll show you how we time stuff in just a second. Let's take a quick look at these different methods. So here's the one that uses the Java fork join framework with only the good old fashioned object oriented Java 7 features. And you can see what it does here is it calls a helper method, which we'll look at in a second called run test, which times things. And it gives a new Java uh, common pool, it takes the Java common pool and makes a file counter fork join task. That's the one that uses the Java 7 object oriented fork join pool features, and it goes ahead and it grabs all the contents to traverse. And you see it goes into the system resources folder. That's right here. And there's a folder called works. And you can see there's a lot of subfolders. And this has enormous amounts of files that are recursively structured. So it has to do a lot of work plowing through them to count all the files and their sizes in those folders. And that's each of these things does pretty much the same thing with respect to the resources that it works on, which is good because we want to have apples to apples comparisons for benchmarking. Here is run file counter sequential stream task. Same thing. We use the common pool. We go ahead and make ourselves a file counter sequential stream task object, which uses Java streams in conjunction with the object oriented fork join pool. And it also works off of all the recursively structured folders in my works directory in the system resources part. And then third and final, we do the same thing, except this time we're going to use parallel streams. And once again, we're going to use the common pool because parallel streams use the common pool. So here are the, here's how we warm stuff up. We basically just say warm up so that way it doesn't get timed. And then here's the run test method. This is the one that everybody calls. And this is kind of cool. So the first thing it does is it runs the system garbage collector. The idea is to make sure we collect all the garbage, give a pristine memory state at the beginning of each run that has all the memory available. And then we check to see whether or not we're doing a warm up. If we're doing a warm up, we run everything, but we don't actually time anything. So that's just warming stuff up. Nothing gets recorded. If we're not warming up, then we go ahead and we use this really cool little helper class called run timer, which we use a lot. So I'll just quickly talk about it. And it's got a method called time run. And the time run method takes a supplier, we'll look at what the supplier is in a second, and the name that we're going to be using here, and it starts timing, which means it just keeps track of the current start time. It then calls the get method on the supplier passed in and stores the results. And then it calls stop timing. And what stop timing done, as you might imagine, is it takes the current time of day, subtracts off the start time, and then divides by a million in order to get the execution time. 
in the right format. We want it in milliseconds. And then we go ahead and store the execution time into this thing called the results map, which is just a map, a hash map that maps strings to long. String is the name of the test. Long is the time it took to execute. And we return the result. So this way we can time everything in a nice clean way. And you can see here what we do when we run this thing is we take the fork join pool and we invoke the test task on in the context of that fork join pool. And then we're going to time everything and run it. When everything is done, we print the results out, which says how much was computed and how many documents were there, how many folders were there, and how big were all the things in basically in bytes. So that's the main driver program here. 